Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start our Wednesday class with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Parvamu, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhur Bhavaswa, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Margo Deva Sadhi Mahin, Dio Yonaha Prachodayat, Astoma Sadhamya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamya, Om Sena Vavatu, Sena Bhunatu, Saviriam Karvavai, Tejasvi Navadi Tamasta, Ma Vidvi Shavai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Okay, I sent you a list of uh, verses yesterday. So, in fact, last week verses also we did not finish looking into. So, there was a verse about dharna. That's where we ended up with last week's class. The Rishi is saying that having the vision of Brahma on whatever object the mind may fall, to steady that mind there is known as dharna. And this is the highest concentration. Okay, so we can concentrate on the worldly objects also, or the worldly aspect of any object also. But when we see the divinity in the object and keep looking at that divinity, that is dharma, dharma, concentration. Okay. So concentration is the technique of a feeling in our own mind also. A constant and continuous atmosphere of divinity. In our own mind too. Or in any one of our chakras. There is a divinity everywhere. That means inside our body too. So let's look at how this dharna or concentration becomes dhyan according to this scripture. So next verse says, Brahma ev asmi iti sadvrityaha niralambyataha stiti dhyani shabdhen vikhyataha parma anand dayani Brahma the truth, the absolute. Ev means alone. Asmi, am. Iti satvrityaha. By such constant thought. Niralambhyata. Depending on nothing. Sthiti, remaining. Dhyan Shabdain, by the term Dhyan. Vikhyata, well known. Paramananda Dayani, bestower of supreme bliss, Paramananda. By constant knowledge that I am Brahma. Not to rest on anything for any support is known by the term Dhyan. And this is the bestower of supreme bliss. So dharna becomes a dhyan. And from dhyan, you are getting that supreme bliss. So there is a subtle difference between dharna and dhyan. Sometimes we overlook this difference. We say dharna, but we are sitting and meditating, trying to meditate, trying to concentrate, and we think it's a dhyan. But a dhyan is, is a culmination of dharna. That is, you reach dhyan through dharna. So constant awareness of the presence of the divine, that's why they say that dhyan not just only sitting down, 
ultimately dhyan becomes from a passive dhyan to become active dhyan you are walking around you are doing your duties you can still do the dhyan that is called the active dhyan so body is actively busy doing the duties but mind is constantly fixated in that divinity so dharma is just a beginning dharma is the first step in meditation and really speaking meditation consists in constantly feeling that the sadhak himself is brahma that you see that brahma inside you too it's not just something which is outside of you it's not only the deity not only in that divine object but in yourself also that is called the sad vritti so first you start recognizing the objects in an atmosphere of divinity that's why we just sit in front of our altar and we try to see that god outside then we feel that god is present inside also because our concentration becomes so excellent in appreciating the divinity at all times and not only at all times everywhere also that is the outcome of the dhyan when you meditate on the aura aura meaning the glow which is the presence of a divinity you see that aura around your guru or aura around that divine object that aura where is it coming from that is the atma or parmatma that is called divinity so in meditation you become aware of that all and when the seeker no more recognizes or experiences in his mind the thoughts or forms of the world outside then doesn't need any support because you are absorbed into that all the awareness of the pure it is felt it is experienced and that is the state of meditation and that's where the bliss is coming from parmananda because first mind was moving from object to another object it was using the crutches crutches are like a support of the mind and we are all familiar with the five kinds of crutches seeing hearing smelling tasting touching those are the crutches whenever the mind moves it puts its step and it steps on one object to the other object it's just depending upon those crutches but to lift the mind away from its support from the crutches constantly and continuously we got to keep that mind attentive alert watchful vigilant and we got to be aware of that consciousness alone then it's meditation because that consciousness in which all objects are bathed is dhyan so this condition when the individual himself experiences himself as nothing but the awareness minus the objects the objectless constantly and continuously is declared vyakyatam as a plan meditation this meditation will shower upon the meditator the supreme sense of fulfillment and completeness of happiness param ananda so from here what happens what is the next stage that is samadhi that is next verse 
निर्विकार तेहा वृत्य ब्रह्म कार तेहा पुनः वृति विस्मरणम सम्यक समाधि ज्ञान संज्ञ कहा निर्विकार तया वृत्या थ्रू चेंजलेसनेस ऑफ थॉट ब्रह्म कार तया थ्रू आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद द ट्रूथ ब्रह्म पुनः अगेन वृति विस वि स्मरणम फॉरगेटफुलनेस ऑफ ऑल थॉट्स दैट मींस मेंटल एक्टिविटी बिकॉज़ थॉट्स आर व्हाट थॉट्स आर happening in our mind so there is no mental activity samyak complete samadhi gyan sangya ka called knowledge gyan okay so gyan in its true sense is a samadhi gyan sangya ka because of one idea that everything is brahm to have no other modification and to dissolve all thoughts is known as a samadhi which is a state of mindlessness so that means the mind has totally gotten absorbed into brahm into the truth the absolute we have to understand that the object of the world are not merely objects but they are objects in the medium of brahm or you can see there are objects which are playing in an ocean of brahm so meditation consists in identifying one self not with the object but with the brahm in which the object is playing through the vritti i am brahm when i experience the brahmakar vritti i totally and completely give up the brahma kar vritti and live only as the brahm that is oneness so when there is a continuous awareness that i am brahm there is no otherness for any length of time it has to be a little longer duration then it's called the samadhi or gyana and this is the first hand experience before that it's still a second hand experience only in samadhi it becomes a paroksha anubhuti this is also called a subjective experience of brahm it's like a seeker ends its identification even the vritti that i am brahm because that vritti is also what a thought first it is the word then it's just a thought then the thought ends to it's almost like even bhagat says <clears throat> from the mouth ram ram which is called ram ram bol the mouth is saying the next step is ram ram rat mind is just keep on thinking about ram 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 first mouth, mouth is speaking then mind is saying then ultimately ram 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 those are like three different stages you can call it a concentration meditation or samadhi okay so the same it's just like a the when we stay on this path we follow this a continue we end into the samadhi and in the one who has become the brahm there's no thought 
that he's the Brahman. He doesn't say, I am Brahman. He doesn't even have to think, I am Brahman. Because it is a subjective state. In that state, there is no thoughts exist. So even the thought that I am Brahm does not exist. That's why Lord Krishna said anybody who is, has reached there can't say that. Upanishads also say that. It's hard to even utter these words because those thoughts are not ever there. So dharna is recognizing constantly and continuously that all objects are Brahm. Dhyan is the act of lifting our mind from the worldly objects, positioning it on Brahma, and then to identify totally and constantly with the Brahma, and ultimately experiencing that I am Brahma. But when the meditator shifts his attention from the vritti, I am Brahm and drops that vritti totally and stares as nothing but Brahm. He is said to be in Samadhi. I hope you can understand the difference between these. Our scriptures, they give an example. They say, if you have a salt doll, and you immerse that salt doll in a salt solution to measure the depth of the solution, what happens to the salt doll? It completely melts. It becomes one with the salt solution. It loses its identity. So the seeker or the sadhak developing in himself the vritti that he is Brahma gives up the vritti. It melts into Brahma. That is called a superabsorption. That's another way some people define samadhi. It's a merger, oneness. And that's what a yoga is, oneness. The total merger into the Brahm where there is no entity to say that he has merged. is called Samadhi. This Samadhi is called Aparoksh Anupoti. Where that Sadhak experiences what the Shastras and the Vedas stammer in their inability to express the infinite. You feel it. You experience it. You cannot talk about it. That's why you just only stammer. Let's look at next verse. Imam cha akritrim anandam tavat sadhu sambhaya set vashyaha Yavat Kshanat Punsaha Pariyuktaha San Bhavet Swayama Imam this Germans and A Kritrim Anandam Blemishless Bliss Tavat so long Sadhu perfectly Sambhyaset should practice Vashya, under full control. Yavat, until. Kshanat, in an instant. Unsaha, a person. Paryuktahasan, being called into action. Bhavet, be swayam at will. This one should practice constantly. Until one gets full control over oneself and thus will be able to enter 
into that blemishless bliss in an instant that would be a lila. So what he is talking about that these 15 steps of this sadhana keep on practicing. Keep on practicing. That's why we are called sadhak, practitioners. Natural bliss will occur. Ananda. Ordinary bliss is a kritrim. That means it's a created one. Or you can say it's a manipulated one. Which is the product of our mind. But uncreated, a kritrim, anand is our nature. That's what he is taking our attention towards. A kritrim anandam. The anand, the bliss that we are enjoying is created by objects right now. The bliss or happiness that we are enjoying is dependent on the fulfillment of the claims of one or the other sense organs or the mind or the intellect. Eyes want to see beautiful scenery. The ears want to hear beautiful music. The tongue wants to taste. The skin wants to touch. Those are all Kritrimma. So the known happiness is now only the gratification of the senses for most of us. Sometimes a student might conclude that when he realizes the Brahm, he will gain the bliss absolute. Sometimes we think this happiness is created by the thoughts only. It's almost like a desire of an object. But the same object can bring the agitation also. Either we get bored with it or if you don't receive it. Because even the joy experienced from having the object, the joy does not stay the same. And in all these conditions, the mind is at play with the thought of joy. Even though the joy we get is not brought from the objects. These inherent objects cannot have the joy. It comes from the mind, from ourselves. So that's why the same object, one person enjoys it, the other person cannot even stand it. Mind. So though this joy is uh, in us is unlimited, what we are experiencing through the object is only a limited and it's dependent on our thoughts for its expression. But when the thoughts get total eliminated, because through dharna, dhyana, samadhi, this is what's happening. Thoughts are getting eliminated and there's no more new thoughts are springing. This happiness which is our very nature that's why they say it's innate to all of us. It is a naturally felt and experienced. So we got to still our thoughts. So this natural happiness, which is our very nature, is called Svarup Ananda. Svarup. The self that we experience in meditation is the ocean of bliss of consciousness which is not created, okay? Or you can say, which is uncreated, a kritrim. It is natural. It is not a product of any effort. And until this natural bliss is experienced, the sadhak is expected to practice all these 15 sadhanas. The 15 steps is the cumulative effect of all the preceding 
14 steps because 15th is Samadhi. So the first 14, when we go through, we keep on practicing. And when these steps put into practice culminates not only in giving up the unending bliss, but also we can command it spontaneously. Irrespective of time, place, circumstance or condition. Because we are bliss. It's always there. Anytime we can get in touch with it. All we have to do is still our thoughts. And these steps are so that we are able to still our thoughts. In the next verse, he says, Tataha sadhana nirmuktaha siddha bhavati yogi raj tat savarupam nacha etasya vishyaha manasaha girama tataha then sadhana nirmuktaha free of all practices siddha perfect bhavati becomes Yogi Rat, master of all yogis. Tat Savarupam, the nature of that. That means that person. No means not, cha means also. Etasya of this. Vishyaha object. Manasaha of the mind. Giram of speech. Then such a person. <coughs> The master of all yogis becomes perfect. Devoid of any more further practices. The nature of such a person cannot be an object either for the mind or for the speech. So that means when a person can at his will command such an equanimity of his mind that he can experience the infinite joy which is his nature. There is no sadhana for him thereafter. So when you are in samadhi, you stay in samadhi. In fact, you don't eat or drink or even the breathing or any kind of activities you don't do. There's nothing to be done. All you do is just say, what does Lord Shiva do for thousands of years? What do the yogis do? Sitting in the caves. No more practice. Practice is just to reach there. So these 15 steps or 14 steps become naturally spontaneous for him actually. That's another thing. When this yogi lives in this world, does not say that I am practicing, that just becomes his nature. Spontaneously natural for him. No question of practicing them anymore. It's almost like a child is a sadhak when learning to walk and has to practice walking. But when he has learned walking thoroughly, he doesn't need to practice walking. Because his, walk, his walking comes to him naturally. And also spontaneously. Or another example we often hear that a person who wishes to sleep will have to put some effort to get to sleep. But once that person falls asleep, all his trials and efforts to get sleep have totally ended because he's sleeping. That's how when a person has awakened to the state of consciousness, 
he has achieved what he has to achieve. The state of such an individual cannot be explained or described. Such a state is not a state of perception, emotions, or thoughts. Because he has transcended those. Perception is through these senses. Emotions are with the mind. He has transcended all that. Such a state is not a state of the lower states which we go through all the time. So it is a state beyond the mind. Mind cannot comprehend. Mind can comprehend only the, something lower than that. Mind cannot comprehend it. His nature cannot be defined. And that's why the Upanishads, what do they say? Brahma with Brahma eva bhavati. This is from the scriptures. The knower of the Brahma becomes Brahma. That is Samadhi. Just as the knower of the waker or the waking state becomes the waker. The knower of the dream becomes the dreamer. The knower of the sleep becomes the sleeper. So knower of the Brahma becomes a Brahma. The infinite cannot be explained by the finite. And no matter how deep the knowledge is, it is finite. Finite cannot explain the infinite. Brahma is not an object to be explained. It is the very subject. That's why Upanishad say, Yato vachyago nirvatante aprapyaha manasasa. From where the words return? That means words cannot explain it. And they return without reaching along with the mind. So words cannot reach there, mind cannot reach there. They can go only up to a certain point. So then in the next verse, uh, this Rishi is uh, bringing our attention because we are still the sadhaks. We haven't reached there. We want to reach there. We are doing our sadhana. We are walking on this path. So he says some obstacles can come. Just like Rishi Patanjali in Yoga Sutras kept telling us that there are obstacles. Be aware, be aware. Just like as our as parents, we tell our children, life is beautiful, but there are obstacles. Be aware. So in the next two verses, uh, we see these obstacles are mentioned. So that on this path, we watch for those obstacles. We don't want to fall flat on our face. We got to be alert. Let's look at these two verses and we'll discuss this next week. But let me give you the word meanings so that you can look at it yourself also. So next two verses together. Samadhau kriye manehe tu vignani ayanti Ve balat anu sandhan narahityam alasyam bhog lalasam. Next verse Layat maha cha vikshepaha rasa swadaha cha shunyata evam yat vigan bahulayam tyajyam brahm vidashane. So samadhau kriye mane while practicing samadhi. Two means and vignani obstacles. 
So vegan, vegan world is for the obstacles. Ayanti appear. Hey mean, where means indeed balat. Balat is with a lot of force. Bal. Force. Anu sandhan rahityam, lack of inquiry. Alasyam, laziness or inertia. Bhog lalasam, desire for enjoyment. Bhog vilas. Laya, sleep. Tamaha, dullness. Cha means end. Vikshepaha, agitation or distraction. Rasa Swadaha, enjoying the joyful state. Cha means also Shunyata, blankness. Evam such, yat, vich, vighan bahulyam, multiplicity of obstacles. Bahu, bahu means many. Tyajyam, get rid of. Brahma vidha, by the seeker of truth. Shanae Salome. When a seeker is practicing Samadhi, unavoidably there will be obstacles. Namely, lack of consistency, laziness, desire for enjoyment, sleep, Dullness, agitations, enjoying the joyful state. Enjoying the joyful state, we'll discuss it next week, but that means you are just enjoying, the mind is enjoying, because you got to transcend the mind also. Blankness and so on. A seeker after Brahm should reject and slowly get rid of the unavoidable obstacles. So we'll go through all of them one by one next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnase Purnamadaye Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om. Thank you very much.